In this video, we're looking at the alternate form of the limit definition of derivative, which is this formula here in red. It says that the derivative f prime at some number a is found by taking the limit as x approaches a of this quantity here. And this quantity has a special name. This is called the average rate of change over the interval a to x. Normally, we've seen this as the average rate of change over the interval a to b. That formula is f of b minus f of a, change in output, over b minus a, change in input. This is the exact same thing, except the second input is called x and not a. Some observations. This is sometimes called the alternative uh, form of derivative or the numerical derivative. So both of these are interchangeable because this will give you a number answer as opposed to, well, usually, as opposed to an algebraic answer. For that reason, we also call it the derivative at a point f prime of some number a, as opposed to f prime of x, the derivative as a function. So derivative as a function is what we call the traditional or just the normal limit form of derivative, or limit definition of derivative. So this is the form we had been using, and we still will use. This is the form we usually see at first. That's the limit as h approaches 0 of this quantity, which is called the difference quotient, as opposed to the average rate of change. This will give you an, a function, whereas this new form will give you a number. Why does this work? Here we have the average rate of change picture. The slope of the red line is the average rate of change over the interval a to x. As x approaches a, so I can't make this animate, but if you were to imagine x to get closer to a, meaning that this point moves closer and closer and closer to the fixed point here at a, then that tangent line uh, starts to emerge from the secant line in red. The red becomes the green. And the value f prime of a that you are about to get is the slope of the tangent line. It'll actually give you a numerical value, the rate of change. An example. Find f prime of negative 2 for this function using the alternate limit definition of derivative. Couldn't fit that last part in. So the alternate limit definition of derivative is the formula from the first slide. The derivative at that number a is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a, change in output over change in input. All we're going to do is replace the number a, which appears in these four places, with the number negative 2. So doing so gives us f prime of negative 2. What we want, our question, is the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this statement, f of x minus f of negative 2 over x minus negative 2. Moving along, this first portion is simply the original function, f of x. So f of x is simply this. That's what it says. f of x equals this business. So I'm literally going to copy that verbatim. 5x squared minus 4x plus 2. But the second portion says f of negative 2, the value of f at negative 2, which is found by plugging negative 2 in place of x in our original function, f, f of negative 2. So doing so produces, so minus all of this, f of negative 2. So that's 5, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times negative 2, negative 2 and negative 4 is 8, so plus 8, plus 2, and all of this is over, as you probably could tell, x plus 2. Moving along, we have... 5x squared minus 4x plus 2 minus this number in parentheses. So 5 times 4 is 20, plus 8 is 28, plus 2 is 30. So the value at negative 2 is 30, and I'm subtracting that. That's over x plus 2, and this is the limit as x approaches negative 2. Notice that I can't actually plug in negative 2 for fairly obvious reasons. But let me see what I can do here. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 of 5x squared minus 4x plus 2 minus 30 plus 2 minus 30 can be simplified in the next step. 5x squared minus 4x, 2 minus 30 is negative 28 over x plus 2. At this point, my problem simply is a, an algebraic limit problem. All i got to do is to 
use direct substitution, which I probably can't do, as you can tell, use factoring and canceling, see if that works, in order to find the limit value. So how do we do this? Let's try factoring and canceling. That'll give me, let's see, a trinomial. I know I have x plus 2 on bottom. That needs to be fixed because if I'm going to plug in negative 2, I better have an x plus 2 term to cancel with. Does that help me working backwards? I know that this term has to be 5x in order to create 5x squared by binomial expansion. I need 28 here. So if I make that a negative 14, that'll give me negative 28, won't it? Does this actually work? 5x times x is 5x squared. Check. Um, 5 times 2 is 10 minus 14. What's 10 minus 14? Negative 4. Check. Negative 14 times 2 is negative 28. Hey, it worked. Cancellation. Giving me this. I no longer have a problem plugging in negative 2 to do direct substitution, so I'm going to try that. 5 times negative 2 minus 14 is negative 10 minus 14, which is negative 24. The answer. If you've learned the power rule, then you know that the finding the answer here is actually very easy. Um, the only point of doing it the long way is to do it from scratch, to do it from first principles, from the original definition and not using some lousy shortcut. But the lousy shortcut allows us to check our answer very quickly. If you've learned the Powell rule, then you know that the derivative function f prime of x is 10x minus 4. The question asks us to evaluate at f prime of negative 2. So if I have f prime of x, I just plug in negative 2. That'll give me negative 20 minus 4, which is the same answer we got a moment ago. So everything checks out. Hope this helps.